I think cities are productivity engines in the sense that a city is a way of creating productivity, and it does that by enhancing the number and the frequency of interactions. Uh, so the more interactions, higher density, higher frequency, allows one to figure out what you're good at and what you're not good at. And then we stop doing the not good and we become better at the good, and that's specialization, and that's productivity. So doing that over as many people as you can creates the opportunity for growth. Cities that are able to spread that experience across their entire population, they're the ones that grow best, grow fastest. The cities are not just a place to live, they're actually a place to engage in employment and to experience the, uh, having a new job and to learning a new skill. That's what really enables it. Now, but if someone isn't able to do that because they don't have a house or because they're located too, their home is too far away from their work or because they have a sick parent who there's no health care for or because they have children that they have to take there's no daycare for, that's a person who is not experiencing as much productivity as they could. <laughs> that's a cost to the city. If they can't be included, they will not be able to contribute. So just being a city doesn't actually do it. There has to be a regulatory regime. There has to be a, an openness to absorb immigration. There has to be a willingness to provide for that kind of flow, whether it's through public housing or transit or just giving people access to what they need in order to become more productive. As we know, two-thirds of the economic development, economic growth of cities is determined by their population flow which is migration is an incredibly important part of how a city develops. And cities that are not able to attract and retain talent, or migrants, are shrink. And people vote with their feet. And we've seen that collapse, whether it's a, you know, a Detroit or the Mayan Empire. If we look at the major cities, they're all immigrant hubs, whether it's a New York or it's a London or it's a Los Angeles or it's a Shanghai or a Beijing. Internal migration is as important as the cross-border migration. And that's, I think, the difference between looking at migrants as costs or as, if you will, assets from an economic perspective. If we look at them as costs, we treat them as costs, and we reduce the amount that we try to minimize the spending on them, they will behave as costs. <laughs> they will, in turn, we, we will reap that whirlwind. But if we view them as assets, things that we can invest in, communities that can develop and become more productive over time and repay that investment through higher productivity, then in turn, they will be a much better outcome for the society and for the immigrants. Many mayors and many cities are taking, taking action on their own. For example, minimum wage movements. Those are actually being driven by cities now, not by countries. So whether it's San Jose or Los Angeles, uh, sort of recognizing that this issue of inclusion at the, at the grassroots level is actually something that cities face the uh, challenge first. So as uh, Fiorello LaGuardia said, there is no Republican or Democratic way to take out the garbage. Uh, so it's uh, the city that ultimately has to decide how it's going to act and what, how it's going to treat people.